So people don't know this, but they've been watching me for like 20 years. They actually been watching me my whole life, you know. They know, somehow they know when you're a child, and I think it has to do with your name. And it's just, you know, when I was like four, somebody tried to choke me to death. And then they tried to set me up with other different things. And it's just like, it's been nonstop. And I'm sure it happened to other people. And then when you see through the truth, you get saved, you see through the whole game, and then they send these Delilahs and Jezebels, and then they send uh, people trying to kill you. Try, I mean, I actually had, about five years ago, I had these four guys walk up. They had their baggy pants on. They got out of the car. I was. They didn't see me. I was in the car. Is this such and such? How? Is this? I said, I said no, this is not. Because I, I was in my car and I cracked the window because I knew I said they're come, we're looking for such and such blah blah blah. I cracked the window because I knew they had guns. I knew they had guns, so I said no. This is not. They said oh okay sorry and they turned around and walked off. I said don't call the police. Don't call the police. I didn't call the police. I should have, but I didn't. But um stuff like that I had one agent she tried to steal my house she tried to steal my house seriously <laughs> I had to, not even joking that was an agent there's agents uh, everywhere around you and there's gatekeepers gatekeepers wanting to keep you from the truth you know so if a gatekeeper sees that you are starting to wake up, they're going to have to defame the messenger and lie about the messenger, you know, make the messenger look bad. If you have somebody that you're interested in listening to, they got to defame that person, make that person look bad so that you don't listen. Because if you break through, if you break free, they lose control over you. So it's all about, they want their slaves, they want their puppets, they want to they want some puppets to control, you know. It doesn't matter if it's a church. It doesn't matter if it's a family. It doesn't matter if it's a corp, corpse, a corporation, a dead corpse. It doesn't matter if it's a nation, if it's a organization, a secret society. See, they've created this fake reality around your life that people you think that you're, or your family, then they're not people you, you you might be married to somebody you think that person's really your spouse and they're actually an agent a secret agent through a freemason or jesuit or catholic or something like that trying to pull you into false teachings and false doctrines and all that stuff the good thing about with my situation i had uh i had access to bbn and in, in the city this the city and i listen to it every day I listen to preachers every day. And so I must have listened to 40,000 preachers. So I took all those different preachers and I compared it with scripture and I studied my Bible and I found the truth. I rightly divided the word of truth. And I had agents, I mean, agents the whole time. They're still up. They're still around. They still try to mess me up, but it's, they're wasting their time. But, I had agents around me my whole life. They'd come in and say, get, want to argue about some kind of losing your salvation. And then a Jezebel would come in and say something. They wanted you to, they actually wanted you to hate women. And they want the women to hate men. That's what they want. They send these agents to try to hurt you and cause pain and make you bitter, to try to get you to hate uh, certain people there might be an agent who's a different race to get you to hate the Spanish people or hate the white people or hate the black people they, they're agents to, to, to cause trauma to get you to, to hate certain groups you know and then when you don't hate people you don't hate anybody they have different they have different tricks that they do. I mean, it's 
It's unlimited. They just come up with something new, off the wall stuff all the time. But then after they hit you with enough stuff, it's, there's no new game, you know, and they start repeating the same game over and over. And they'll look at the past in the areas that you might have failed or you made a mistake, you know, you dated this kind of girl or you dated this kind of woman or you married this kind of woman. And so they'll send certain people with those same traits into your world. And they're always watching. They're always watching. They're watchers. They're gatekeepers. There's agents. There's a military industrial complex. And there's uh, society leaders who pretty much are watching certain people. And then they'll have, they might even have a friend from, uh, elementary school has been with you your whole life and they're they're an actual agent you thought it was your friend and you and you know they're agents because you just write down what they say and you you realize they're trying to get you to commit suicide <laughs> i mean it's like what they're trying to get you to be depressed they're trying to be get you to to not to lose your faith they're trying to get you to they're trying to see and you say well they're not that smart how do they do it? Because they're Freemason people, or they're Wiccan people, the witches that control them. They're telling them what to say. They'll repeat a script over and over. You talk to them, they'll say the same script over and over and over. It's like, didn't you just say that yesterday, or last week, or last month? Don't you have some kind of new thing to say? And it's always the negative it's always the suicide. It's always the worry and the doubt and the fear. It's always a fear dar instead of faith. They're always trying to put you in fear and not faith. They're always trying to put you in uh, your mindset in a negative instead of a positive. Why do they do that? Because they're agents. Now, some of these agents are ch choose to be agents by choice. And the other ones, they don't even know they're controlled by the devil. They don't even know they're controlled by their little group because what happens is everybody's got their little group, right? And so if there's one person who's weak, surrounded by a bunch of agents, and they've pretty much destroyed that person, that person's just walking in the AI flesh mind in fear and doubt and worry. And then when you run across this person, they might not even know that they're doing it. They're enslaved, they're a slave, and they're in bondage by their conversation. You can see it. They don't have faith. They don't have hope. They don't have joy. They don't have peace. They're just walking around because the people around them ha are trying to kill them. Because they're actually uh, not one of them. They know. If a person has a good heart and a good conscience, and they can't convert them over to the demonic side, and they know they're going to be saved or they are saved. They're not a part of either group. And so it's a process. So if somebody's straddling the fence between the, the goats and the sheep, they know that they're not going to be a goat because usually their name determines their calling. So they're being pulled to the light. And so the goats are just going to harass them and play games and mind games with them. Whereas the sheep are trying to pull that person out of Babylon and out of darkness into light, you know. And so you're born into a Freemason, Jesuit, Kabbalist, demonic matrix, a death cult, and they want Illuminati sacrifices before the age of 33. If you made it past 33, good. That's good. But if you notice recently, there's some people who died who were killed at 33 on the news. And so they're always going to be somebody every year that dies at the age 33 because that's their cult. They're trying to, they're actually just trying to mock Jesus because he went to the cross at 33. And so to make a long story short, when you've been attacked for pretty much your whole life for at least 20 years and you're sitting here scratching your head thinking I'm not trying to hurt anybody why are they trying to hurt me I'm not trying to get over on anybody why are they trying to get over on me and so you you realize you wake up and you say oh 
no matter where I go, I could change jobs, I could change cities, I could change states, because I have, and it's the same game. I've changed states, I've changed jobs, I've changed cities, I've changed associates, I've changed names, I've changed channels, I've changed platforms, and it's the same game. And there's certain people that actually follow you for 20 years. They'll follow you for 20 years. And the the ones that are the most... Uh, adamant are the Wiccans. The Wiccans will chase you down. And see, what happens with the Wiccans, and that, this is something that nobody really knows. The Wiccans, okay, so there's covens in each city, right? And so the Wiccans, they report back and they keep a database on you. And there's a website or a web page somewhere you can log in. And they keep a database on you of things that you, uh, in the past, that bothered you or something, you know? Or things that they just keep hitting and hitting and hitting, or lies or whatever. There, there's a web a website or a database that they keep on you, and the covens. So if I was to go to another state or another city, the covens would would tell these people this coven over here. Okay, here's the database. This guy's person. This is what he likes to eat. This is what he talked about last week. This is what he said to one of the coven agents one of the witches last week and then you'll be talking to somebody in another city and they'll say the exact same thing because it's in a database because the coven is uh is real and they keep a database on people seriously i i know it sounds crazy but there's a database on everybody and they do it on each other they don't even trust each other if 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 a person leaves a coven they're going to take them out if a person leaves a coven, says, I'm leaving the coven, they'll say, you better not say anything because something's going to happen. They will actually be threatened that they can't say anything. And they actually, they can never admit they were a Wiccan or a witch. They can never admit it because either them or somebody in their family would be taken out. Once you join, you could leave if you got saved, born again. You could say, look, I'm done. I'm, I'm saved. Do whatever you want. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I don't care. I'm saved. I'm free. There's people who have left. But most people are so scared of losing their life that they would never say, hey, I was in the coven, or I was a Wiccan, or I was a witch, or I was a Freemason, or I was a Jesuit. They never could admit it, because they're worried about losing their their life. And so they have this mindset, these people have this mindset of a harassment mindset, or to pick on somebody, or to say things to hurt people, or to to cause people turmoil or pain or something like that. They have this mindset that that's what they live for because it's happening to them and they do it to each other. And it's like the reason they do it to each other is to, to show the other person, Hey, I'm, I'm one, I'm like you. We're on the, we're the same kind of person. We're, we're goats. They'll say stuff to that a sheep wouldn't understand. And a goat says, Oh, okay. So they're a goat. They, they can fight each other and still just hold their, not even, not even flinch, you know. I'm talking about fight with words and they wouldn't even flinch. They can, they undercut each other. All story short, you have agents, you have gatekeepers, you have people always watching, you have a database on you, and you have, uh, and sometimes the database is fake. It's not even real. But they spread it just to to try to put some fake identity on you. They try to steal your identity. They try to project an identity on you. They have people that actually mimic your identity. Because these people have no identity. Because they're dead. And so if you become popular, they'll try to, to be like you. They'll try to steal your teachings. They'll try to... I mean, it's really, it's so bizarre. It's hard to even believe that this stuff is going on. It's like, don't y'all have something to do? 
Don't y'all enjoy it? Don't y'all want to build something or do something? But they don't. They don't. They're not builders. They're not. They're just destroyers. They just only know how to destroy. And so when you tell people stuff like this, they'll say, you're crazy. You're insane. They'll, they'll come out of the woodwork saying, see, he's crazy. But if you watch enough movies, the, the movies, the writers of these movies are telling you, like the, the ones who wrote The Matrix, the ones who wrote, uh, what was it called, Minority Report or something. These different movies are telling you that it's, 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 it's more than Big Brother. It's, it's a secret society. It's not just the police. It's the secret societies. It's the witches and the warlocks, the, the Wiccans, the, the goats. They're watching you all the time. And it's really easy now because you got your cell phone, other people's cell phone. You can be talking to somebody and not even have your cell phone, and it'll be through their cell phone, and they'll know how to send you an email or something. You know. So I go down here and look at these electric bikes for sale, and then I come back to the house and I get an email for an electric bike. You know, How do they know that? Because the lady put my email in her computer to email me. And then I just, you know, it's it's so obvious. They're always trying to do predictive programming and get you to go a certain path or whatever. That's all. The reason they're doing predictive programming and putting thoughts into your mind is because they want to think they're God. They want to they wanna treat you like a puppet. And this is why it's important that you cut the TV off, the music off, because they all work in unison. And if they can get a bunch of puppets working the same, it's easier to manipulate the masses than individuals. So when you go to the restaurant and they've got the songs on that they had on last year, they found out which songs make you emotionally act a certain way, right? They know which kind of... For the men, they know which kind of woman you're attracted to. For the women, they know which kind of man you're attracted to. So they know your weakness, or they know your desire, or they know your wants in life, or whatever, and they try to hinder them. They try to put the apple out there, but then they try to hinder it at the same time. This is a demonic system. I mean, the devil is so evil. You wouldn't think this way. But as you sit back and you watch... You pay attention to your own thoughts. You pay attention to your desires. You pay attention to your wants or needs. or You just pay attention to your own inner thoughts. And if you just do that for a year and, and just take notes, and there will be people in your world who try to mess with those inner things, and you're thinking, how did they know? Are they reading my mind? No, they got a database on you. They've watched you your whole life. And they programmed you with music and people around you and news and media. You gotta have this, or you gotta need this, you gonna need this with advertisements and all that. So you're being brainwashed without even knowing it. And I know it's hard to believe, but you're being controlled. And the only way you're gonna break it is cut their cut their noise off because all the Gentile system is is to create a bunch of puppets with a bunch of strings to get you to live in the past to get you to live in regret to, to get you to think I wish life was this but if you really think about it so they want to put people in front of you because they have this best, so called best life if you really think about it and you go talk to these people who supposedly have this best life they're usually cheating on each other. They're usually fighting. They're usually arguing. They're usually on drugs. They're usually drinking. They're taking some kind of Xanax. I had a pastor tell me, he said, 90, he said, 80% uh, of the women in his congregation, he's dead now, so I can talk about this. 80% of the women in his congregation were on Xanax because the doctors were giving them Xanax. Now, why would that be? These are saved women, some of them. But why would the why would eighty percent of the women be on some kind of Xanax or pill? Because the system has made them that way. Now a lot of it's their own choices, and a lot of it's their own 
sin and they go instead of going to God they went to a doctor because usually if you have a, like an emotional problem it's because you didn't go to God and repent and f ask for forgiveness and you're still living in guilt, shame, condemnation but you can get rid of that but my point is it's not just their sin it's going to a doctor and a doctor instead of a doctor saying hey is your heart right are you are you right with God? No, they here we'll just give you a pill, and we'll drown out the conviction. You see what I'm saying? The conviction of sin. They want to drown that out. The psychologists want to drown out the conviction. The local bar wants to drown out your conviction. Your family or your friends here. Oh, I'm having a bad day. Well, here, take this. You see, they're drowning out your conviction of sin to run back to God and get healthy. And you don't need those pills. Once you say, Lord, forgive me, it's over. And if somebody tries to bring it up, and they will, the minions of the devil will. Let's say, let's say you did something and you ended up in jail or something. You say, Lord, forgive me. You get out of jail. It's over. It's done. If somebody brings it up, Look, I paid my time. I'm out of jail. That's what you tell them. But people will try to bring it up to get you to live in the past because that's not who you are anymore. So they, the devil's in time. So he, he can, what's, what's the devil's tool to live, get you to live in the past, to get you to live in fear or regret or worry or whatever? I didn't plan on this going this way, this, this audio. But I promise you, They'll try to kill you. They'll try to defame you. They'll try to lie about everything that Paul went through. They're trying to do. He was shipwrecked. He had enemies within, without. He had false brethren. It's happening all the time. And you might say, well, why? You say, why? Because it's the script. They persecuted Jesus. They're going to persecute you. Why would they persecute Jesus? Because he's the light. And the light came into the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And so the darkness wanted to, to change Jesus into darkness, which they couldn't, because he is the light. So they had to kill the light, because they were under conviction. So that conviction and that guilt and that shame and all that that's on them because they reject Jesus, they have to try to project it onto somebody else. This is why you see people who are in their little world and they're religious and then somebody does something and they get mad. They get mad at that person. And you're like, why are you mad? That's not you. They're projecting their own guilt and their own shame and their own whatever onto that other person. They'll, I mean, it might be something stupid. They're prejudiced. They're, they're profiling. They're prejudiced. They're bad. But actually, the reason they're mad is because they're the one that's prejudiced. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason they get so angry at somebody who makes a mistake or somebody who said something the wrong way is because they have the guilt, the shame. The reason the goats attack the sheep is because the goats are under the guilt, shame, condemnation because they didn't run to Jesus and get saved. So they have to project it out. The reason the narcissist and the psychopaths want to project it on the others, you know, the, the, the psychopaths that become murderers, they justify in their mind killing people. Why? Because they're evil. They're a psychopath, but they have to project it onto the rest of the population. They'll go out and they'll kill all these prostitutes because they're bad. But the psychopath is really mad at himself. So he's out here killing uh, whoever, but it's really him that he's, he, he's mad at himself. So the reason they get mad and project it out onto somebody else and the reason they persecute is because they're really not content in themselves. They're not happy with themselves. So they have to do that.
I don't know why I started talking about this. I was mainly just talk, going to talk about how uh, don't be shocked that you're going to be persecuted because it's just it's just going to happen. And you, you've got to be able to, to be aware of your inside and don't take it personal because it's really not personal. They're really not attacking you. They're attacking Jesus in you, the Holy Spirit in you. You can just walk in the room and they don't like you. It's just the way it is. That's the way this matrix works. The sheep and the goats. You try to you try to restore a goat back to health, and they'll even take that wrong. You're actually trying to help them, and they'll actually misconstrue that. I mean, it's really bizarre. You you could go out here and take this homeless person off the road and give them a place to stay, and within a week or two, they would flip out. And they would accuse you of this, that, and the other. And it's like, that would happen. That would really happen. They would accuse you of not doing something right or doing something. Actually, you tried to help them. You rescued them. You helped them. But then they can't, because they don't have the right mindset of to be whole or healthy, they would actually turn it around on you and find something, and they would end up back right on that street they would end up back in the same cycle over and over. No matter how many times you reached out to help them, they would try to pull you down with them because they don't have life in them. They have death in them. It's the death cult that's built into them. Everybody's born in sin, so everybody was born into the death cult, but some people get born again and get saved, and they leave the death cult, but the death cult doesn't want you to leave because they want you to be in the pig pen with them because they're miserable. And if you don't go out and party with them, the Bible says if you don't run with them to the same excess of riot, they speak evil of you. If you don't do their drinking and their drugging and their bar hopping and their carousing and all that stuff, they speak evil of you, the Bible says. Why? Because they're the death cult. That's all they know is death. That's all they know is... Uh, that's all they know. And they all have a they all have like a handler. Because if they didn't have the handler, they'd already jumped off a bridge. They all have a handler to help keep them from destroying themselves completely. Because these handlers know they need them to attack the saints. There's some people who are just part of the death cult and don't even know it. And there's some people who have sold out to the death cult who become handlers to promote it to attack Christians. Apostle Paul, he said he persecuted the church. He rose up in the Jews' religion by persecuting the church. So the more they persecute you, the more they rise up in their religion or their their position of power. Paul said it. He said, I persecute he said, I prospered in the Jews' religion more than anybody, and I I, I persecuted the church and I I rose up in the Jews' religion. What is he telling you? He's telling you that if you persecute the saints, you rise up in the death call. That's what he's telling. The verse is there. Just read it. You can Google it. Uh, I'm trying to quote it verbatim, but I can't. Let's see. Paul says, he says, I, I, something about rising up in the Jewish religion, um, I'll try to find the verse and put it under this video. But he 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 prospered in the Jews' religion more than all his fellows. Cause he he didn't use the word persecuted, but he he's chased down and destroyed as much of the church as he could. I mean, they were actually going house to house. Are you a believer? It's kind of like a witch hunt, you know. I mean, it was I mean, for him to say that, he's given you a hint that the way they rise up in the death cult is they persecute the saints. It's right there in the Bible. I'm going to look this verse up. I hope I can find it. I'm sure I will, but I wish I could quote it verbatim. But if you really think about what I'm saying, one of their top dog persecutors got saved. And how did he get saved? God shined a light. He went blind. God had to. 
was it? I think it was Saul. Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? Who are you, Lord? Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason these death cult people persecute is to rise up in that system, which is what? Pleasers of men instead of pleasers of God. Lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God. These people are so much of the world that it's not even funny and they know what you're doing they got a database they're 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 always scheming trying to make you trip up and fall they're always doing it i mean they never stop they'll give you a two or three day break i mean i've actually seen them i've seen the pattern they'll mess with you for a while and then they'll give you two or three days and they'll read because their trick didn't work so they'll go away and then they'll come back just like the devil does the devil will mess with you try to mess you up and then he'll go away for a season but he always comes back because they can't stop there's this wally cody he can't wally cody cannot stop chasing roadrunner he just can't do it even though he's even though he fails every time they can't stop they have to it's their nature this is real, people. I know it's bizarre, but it's real. And the Apostle Paul told you, he rose up in the Jews' religion because he persecuted the church. He, he had a zeal for the. He had a zeal that was beyond all his fellows, trying to destroy the church, the early church. I know it sounds crazy, but it's. When you really sit back, cut the noise off, and you start to meditate and take notes, you got to take notes. I took notes for a long time, for 10 years. I got like five baskets full of notes. And when you start to really take all the data points and just think about what's going on, it all, at one, one day, it'll just flood in. Oh, these people were fake. Oh, these people were just like these people. Oh, they're all connected. What are they connected in? They're connected in the death cult. Why are they doing it? Because they must rise up in the death cult. Apostle Paul was doing it because he was rising up. Yeah, yeah. And what's the Bible say? They'll, they'll kill you thinking they're doing God's service. They call good evil and evil good. They've twisted reality. They're like, they're like a mirror universe. They have to... They have to, they have to do it, because the flesh mind always persecutes the spirit mind. If you're walking in the spirit, there's going to be an agent coming after you, all the time. And they, you might get a, a break, two or three days, but they'll show back up. They always do.